violent death sparked national outrage and protest is laid to rest. A dozens gathered to remember James Boyd. He was a man shot to death by Albuquerque police about four weeks ago. Friends, family, and people Boyd never even knew showed up to say goodbye to him yesterday. Now, those who did know James Boyd remembered him as generous, kind-hearted, and often misunderstood. The executive director of St. Martin's Hospitality Center, which hosted the funeral yesterday, says Boyd's death awakened the souls of his community. We can no longer walk silently by individuals struggling with mental health issues and pretend we don't see their faces. Mr. Boyd, who suffered from mental illness, was camping illegally in the foothills back on March 16th. Neighbors in the area east of Tramway and Copper called police and complained about him. That resulted in a long standoff before Albuquerque police shot and killed Boyd. Well, that Boyd Memorial followed just days after the Department of Justice released its scathing results of its investigation into Albuquerque's police department. Meanwhile, the federal investigation into Boyd's death continues this morning. Right, on this video that's gone viral, not this, this is the protest afterward. You can see officers Keith Sandy and Dominic Perez shooting Boyd in the foothills. This is the video there. Boyd was armed with knives, but appears to be turning away when the officers Perez and Sandy shot at him. In a DOJ investigation that APD released Thursday, the Fed cited the initial statement of new APD Chief Gordon Eden that the shooting was, quote, justified as evidence the department has a long way to go even under the direction of new leadership. Mr. Reed and the police chief later admitted he spoke too soon. Responding to the DOJ's findings that APD often resorts to unconstitutional use of force will be costly and time consuming. One city councilor says there is another element that is just as important as reforming the police department. Isaac Benton represents the downtown area. He is looking to pump more money into programs helping the homeless and mentally ill. Benton has a few other ideas like working more with the Metro Detention Center to improve substance abuse and mental health treatment. Fund the city's winter-only shelter to operate year-round, increase the budget for Albuquerque heading home, and do the same with the Workforce Housing Trust Fund to provide more affordable living. With a tricky budget and the recent DOJ findings, the cost is going to be big, and these fixes won't exactly be easy. That's going to cost money, too, and I'm just trying to, to point out that, that uh, we've got to have a balance between just just this issue and, and our underlying social issues. Benton says he feels the system failed James Boyd. Benton says he's also looking at programs that aren't working so that some of that money can be shifted toward the programs that are. And as to be expected, fixing APD is not going to happen overnight. The next step is negotiating an agreement with the Department of Justice. The feds listed 46 specific changes, everything from use of force policy to training. Mayor R.J. Berry has made it clear he is eager to get moving. The city has hired two experts who have been through this before to help negotiate the agreement. Former Cincinnati Police Chief Tom Stryker and former ACLU attorney Scott Greenwood. In 2002, they were advisories but helped work out an agreement on similar reforms within the Cincinnati PD. After the agreement is reached, the city and the DOJ will pick a monitor. We'll make sure the changes happen. All of this could cost millions. Stryker and Greenwood's consulting company has an initial contract of $75,000. Stay with KRQE News 13 as we continue to follow the very latest developments on APD and the DOJ's reforms on air and, of course, online at KRQE.com. Now, that's where you'll find extensive coverage and the full DOJ report. Investigators from Santa Fe and Rio Rancho are now teaming up to stop what could be a huge credit card scheme. Rio Rancho police say a skimmer was found attached to the credit card reader at a pump at this giant gas station that's off of Highway 528. A skimmer is a device that lets thieves grab your credit card info so they can go run up charges on your account. Santa Fe police have been investigating a skimmer found at a giant gas station off St. Francis and I-25. More than 600 people had their info stolen there. Most had Del Norte credit union cards. Santa Fe police say its detectives are now working with Rio Rancho to see if these cases are all connected. Well, her story has been a huge talker on our website. And just when it looked like a young girl wouldn't get to play in a boys basketball tournament, the tournament did a 180 and is letting her. Little Jalen Bates, pint-sized, passionate female basketball player right here, will be allowed to lace up her sneakers and take on the boys in the Salsa Slam in two weeks. 
Last week, remember we told you New Mexico Select, a youth basketball organization, refused to allow Jalen to play, saying it was against the rules. Girls have played in the tournament before, but Joseph Jaramillo, the organization's director, had said the rule was being enforced because of complaints from parents. Well, Jalen's parents filed an injunction, calling it a civil rights violation. Now, before that injunction actually got to court, the organization changed its mind. You know, we, we do stand, uh, we hold to our rules um, that we have, and, and we believe they're good rules. Um, but the, the truth is that we do acknowledge that um, as we move forward, um, this issue has caused a, a major divide in the community. Yeah, tell us what you think. Head to KRQE.com. You'll see this story. Mr. Jaramillo there says New Mexico Select will be taking a look at its rules for future tournaments as well. Now here's some good news. An MMA fighter's giant exotic cat is back home this morning. John Bones Jones posted a $1,500 reward last week for the return of his unusual pet, to say the least. The four-foot-tall, 20-pound African cat named Mufasa escaped from Jones' home near Carlisle and Constitution. Now, after we aired the story, Kyle Dropinski, a big fan of the fighter, started looking for Mufasa. He found the spotted kitty on Thursday night in a tree a few blocks from his home. Animal Control got him down safely, and Jones forked over that $1,500 reward. I, I heard some uh, brushling, like, uh, some rustling in the, br in the, in the brushes, and uh, I, had, I just had a, I had a vibe that he was in that area. Oh, man. Now, Jones says Mufasa has lost some weight, but otherwise he is okay. He's just glad to have his furry friend back. For more details on the return, go to our website, krqe.com. First, it was 2011, then 2012, then 2013. Now, Sir Richard Branson says Virgin Galactic will almost certainly start flying into space from New Mexico this year. You know, it is rocket science. Nothing's guaranteed. We've had difficulties. Uh, NASA had problems when they were building, you know, first building their spaceships as well. I'm pretty convinced that by this summer, a, a large new spacecraft will go into space. This summer? Yeah, this summer. And then, and then I think by September, myself and my family uh, would have been into space. I'm, uh, you know, 90 percent convinced that that will happen. 90% convinced. Almost 700 people have signed up for the $250,000 pop space flights.